There's a chicken pen over there, doing a bit of chicken tractoring. You can see it's um, pretty bare. So that's sort of the opposite of <laughs> the opposite of like planned grazing. This is this is chicken tractoring. This is pure permaculture. This is using chickens to do the job of herbicides and um, and digging and machinery. So you can see they've turned, you know, what would have been really lush material into completely barren, which is a good thing for a while. Because what I'm going to do is soon I'm going to move this pen. And I'll chop back that lantana and spread that around as a bit of mulch. And then I'm going to plant corn. Corn and beans. And all I have to do is just walk around with the pointed stick and I'll plant the corn. And what will happen is the corn will be able to feed on all the nutrient that's been dropped by the chickens. will feed the corn. So the corn's able to get up to say 30 centimetres before the cooch, which is still alive, um, is able to recover. And then the corn starts to shade the cooch, and then the beans also shade the cooch. The combination of corn and beans. Um, and then I might put sweet potato in there as well. So it'll be a follow on, it'll be corn, beans, sweet potato, and then all together they defeat the cooch, or at least just hold it back. Because I don't actually hate cooch. Cooch is great, it feeds chickens. Um, but um, I don't like digging and I hate spraying, so that's not going to happen. Anyway, next we'll move on to this little thing I'm doing now, which is um, a little tree row. Now, 15 years ago, I put a mandarin seedling in the ground. Um, I dug a hole, I put the seedling from a pot in, and I walked away. And then 15 years later, I've come back and it had a few fruits last year. It's been very slow, but it has been mangled by the cows. But this branch here had a few fruits. Now they were a little bit sour, but I think... Um, should never judge the character of fruit by its first first season, um, especially if it hasn't been cared for. So, um, you know, give it a bit of time. A little bit of vetch growing up through here from the winter. What I'm going to do soon, I have to, I have to finish treating this bed first, I'm going to prune this citrus. Now, normally you don't prune citrus unless you have to. Now, this is a seedling. You can see, see the big ass thorns there. Look at that. Look at that thorn. Yeah, whenever you see thorny citrus like that, you know it's a seedling. Check this out. So this is why I was able to, to persist against the cows for so long. So, you know, if you want to do food forestry with uh, cows, yes, you can do citrus. You can do oranges and mandarins and that kind of thing. And they will be thorny. And they'll be thorny until they reach a point which the cows can't reach them. Look at that. This is an ad adaptation for herbivory. You see this in a lot of trees. The lower branches are thorny, and they get to a certain point which, which the herbivores that they've evolved with can't feed above, and they stop producing thorns because the thorns are expensive to create. Metabolically expensive, not money expensive. Anyway, so this is, this is, the, this is the point. So this is a medium or low. I don't know. I haven't figured out mandarins yet. Medium or low. Medium low. Um, strata plant. So I paired it with a, today, paired it with a, a non-astringent persimmon. Now this is going to have to be boxed. I'm going to have to keep this nice and short, so I'll probably just, I'm probably going to shave the top off it. Okay, I'm going to make it go a bit sideways. Keep that fairly short, so I can keep this fairly short. Because this being high strata and that being low, this one's still going to be above. The, the bottom of the canopy of that one is still going to be above the top of the canopy of that one. So it'll still be, it's got to be up there still, right? And parrots, fruit fly, everything, you know, basically, basically these guys here, the same way we can eat them without leaving them go fully, fully ripe and going soft, we can eat these like an apple. This is Saruga, by the way, Saruga persimmon. We can eat these, but so can everything else. Okay, so if you don't, if you want hassle-free persimmons, get the astringent ones and be prepared to eat them when they're squishy. Squishy and delicious, which is all the ones I've got out the front and the ones I also grow over there. Mostly I grow astringent persimmons, but my wife, she likes the non-astringent ones. So I said, okay, you can have one. <laughs> one, Saruga. So apparently it's quite good. This cost me, I don't know, it's a fair bit. It's from Ross Creek Tropicals. I would endorse them on quality. Quality, delivery, service. Absolutely. Yes, you pay more. You absolutely do pay more. They're, they're premium 
nursery. Um, I buy from them because they give me the, um, the rare stuff that I'm looking for. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Go there for the rare stuff. Um, what else we got? Pushed in some avocado seedling over there. Um, see, I like a bit of redundancy because I've got, yeah, this is my main plan, okay? Persimmon, mandarin, seedling mandarin, by the way. Saruga. This one here is a um, native currant, which is an anti-desma. Um, in Indonesia, we call it buni. It's a species of buni, not the buni, but a buni. Um, so that's just, I don't know, it might be good, might be not, who knows. So I'm not really committed. See, I've got this, which is, I don't know if it's going to be good or not. I know this is going to be good. Nah, don't know. So I've backed myself up there with a um, with an avocado. Might as well use the space. If the avocado ends up being rubbish, well, I'll just chop it out, use it as biomass. And if it ends up being fantastic, and then I have to make a choice between that and this, eh, no problem. Keep this, graft this to another seedling tree. If this is really good, of course I want to make more. So I'll just move it onto seedling trees. All right, so this is like a seedling selection. And then I have a DPM banana. Now this is a, like a mutation, ra uh, a radiation mutation. So they took some bananas and they subjected them to radiation to cause genetic mutation. And they selected from the, the offspring and they came up with this DPM, which is a French word. It's an abbreviation of a French word. Whatever, it's like a Cavendish. It's, it's, it's like a Cavendish, but it's not actually genetically a Cavendish. Genetic Cavendish to me are useless because they are totally sterile. Can't use them in any breeding programs. I don't particularly like Cavendish. Um, the only thing I like about it is some of its yield properties and all that kind of thing. Like it's, you know, it yields twice as much as any other bananas. Um, but if it's sterile, so it's kind of useless because I'm actually trying to breed bananas here. Uh, a bit of dragon fruit. I also got this from Ross Creek. I had to figure out. It says J down the bottom. J R. Hmm. <laughs> Go back in my records. Find that was. Bit of uh, comfrey, which is head coat purple. It's different to the Bocking 14. I think this one actually produces seeds, so I'm planting it at my at my risk. Um, same thing as a bit of agapanthus. This is a purple agapanthus because my wife loves them. Um, that's going to be a low stro. I think Agapanthus is low strata. If it's medium or low, it doesn't matter because we're a little bit open here and it you know, opens up to the north. Whatever. Um, but they're juicy. Now, snails love them. That's the, that is the biggest problem. Snails love them. But that's all right. I can pen the ducks around here anyway. And what I do like about them is they're juicy. So they're a bit like a, a, bit like a banana. I can cut them and I can tuck them in under the mulch next to the trees I like to grow. Just moving on quickly. I'm going to put chilies along the line here. I collected some some chilies from Inala, from the Asian Asian um, big Asian market there, and it looks quite a lot like a a chili from Indonesia we call rawit, chili rawit, uh, chabe rawit, which is uh, like a bird's eye but it's a little bit longer. Anyway, my wife misses those, so I'm going to plant a line of these here so she can make her sambal. Put the dragon fruit in. Again, dragon fruit's just like if you get it at the wrong spot, who cares? It's going to grow later when you move it. Then you're going to have 10 times as many dragon fruit to move. So it doesn't matter. Don't get too attached to the location. I've got a poplar in here. Again, I just took a cutting from near casino. I made it myself. Cost me nothing. Bit of time, bit of fun. Like literally like, you know, snip, snip, snip. Put it in a tube with, an, with 100 others. Um, I sell these on eBay. Fantastic. I love them. Um, you can actually grow edible mycorrhizal mushrooms on the roots of these guys. So they're subtropical, but they also, um, they straddle the temperate zone and they don't sucker. So normally I don't touch poplars. There's three poplars I'll, I'll touch. Gunanansis, Simonii, and the deltoides, or the hybrids of deltoides, the cottonwood, because they don't sucker. Any poplars that sucker, I mean, I'm only on wake, one acre. There's no way, there's no way they're going to grow them. They're there for people who've got cows and sheep and all that kind of thing. And then they're fantastic because the suckering, a suckering poplar produces food. All right, so the animals will eat all the grass and then they'll come and eat the leaves from the poplar and they'll get their minerals and their nutrition. It's fantastic. So just to recap again, oh, there's some bulbs over there. Hippiastrums, citrus mandarin seedling. It's grown by itself. Seedling um, avocado. Then we have a berry down here. I think, what is this thing? 
a Waldo Blackberry. Now this is a fairly non-vigorous blackberry, but it doesn't have thorns. Okay, so it's not very, it's not super vigorous. It's not going to take over and it doesn't have thorns. So it needs a nice spot and I've got it here with these guys. They're generally high strata by the way, as far as I can tell. Um, not medium, definitely not low. They do not perform in low, I'd say high strata for them because that's the way they want to be when they want a fruit and that's pretty much the only reason you want a blackberry. DPM banana, dragon fruit, chilies all along. Then I'm going to put in some, and there we got the poplar. This is lantana. I'm going to leave this here, keep chopping it, and the native currant. And then also I'm going to chuck in a few more eucalypts. I'm going to put in some cassava to take over from the chili. Now, if I want to keep the chili, doesn't matter. Just cut the cassava. It's the only reason I want the cassava anyway. I don't really like cassava, but people who do like to buy cassava from me to plant, and so I sell these on eBay. And what I can tell you is that when you buy cuttings from me, you can cut them into single node cuttings. Single node cuttings like this. And they'll grow faster. This one's actually already starting to germinate. Um, so when you buy a few sticks from me, chop them up into pieces and you get many. As much as you need. All right, a bit of sweet corn. What do we got here? Like three types of sweet corn and a bit of one of my breeds of glass gem cross. And then there's this big old white seed in here, which is a Madagascan moringa. It's another species of moringa. And we just got some peach seeds from Southview Orchards. And we're going to stick those in as well. And the peaches will never be allowed to grow peaches. They will just be there for biomass. So they're going to be just stuck in any old gaps. So you imagine this is going to be like a wall of vegetation. Okay. Come late summer and then all goes dormant. That loses its leaves, the peaches drop their leaves. Dragon fruit's the same, that's evergreen, that's evergreen, okay? Now in spring, boom, wall. Wall of flowers from the peaches. Um, this one comes back into leaf. Um, the bananas starts powering away in October. Now as soon as the, the peaches finish flowering, I'm brutal, chop them off at 30 centimeters. All right, I don't want fruit, I don't want peaches. They just get stung with fruit flow, pain in the ass things they are. Um, only for the biomass. Chop them, big handfuls of stuff, lay it down, lay it down, lay it down. And um, yeah. And if I ever don't like the peaches anymore, I'll just cut them off at the ground level. And then they're gone. So that's just, uh, <laughs> what is this, four meters, four and a half meters long? Um, that's a lot of stuff to fit in there, but that's, that's, how we, that's how we roll. All right. So thank you very much. Stay until the end. Bye.